See Rocky? Hey Rock. <laughs> so this is a camera case. This is a camera bag. And since I'm always being asked what I use to shoot all the videos for this channel, I figured now's about the time I show you guys. And since there's all sorts of stuff in this bag and in this case and in this bag, and there's not a lot of room within this van, uh, I figured I'd go up to the bayonet offices and show you everything. <laughs> okay. That case. Whoops. There's that bag. So, almost everything I shoot with is within these cases. And over the years, I've had all sorts of gear, whether it be camera equipment or audio gear or lights. Blech. But when I started working for Bayonet full time, uh, I ended up selling everything I had because I could use all their stuff and I needed the cash to then like reinvest into my shoe company. So when I started this YouTube channel, I basically had to start from scratch. And then over time, I've slowly been building my, my gear back up. And I don't have everything I'd like to have, but now I have everything I need to just make my own stuff. So I guess I can start with this bag and everything that's in it. This is an in-case DSLR Pro Pack. It's a decent sized bag. I mean, it fits everything, almost everything I need it to, and it's not like super thick. And since I'm using my gear right now to film this, it's gonna be a little strange jumping back and forth, but I'm gonna jump to a GoPro now and do like a top down view so you can see what's in here and I can walk through it all. This is the main compartment. This is my camera. So this is a Sony A6400. Uh, I got it for about 800 bucks off eBay used. This came with the stock battery and then some two extra like knockoff batteries. I ended up buying two more batteries and these are also like knockoff ones. They're called Digital Mate. And then I did buy this external cage with this grip on it here. This gives me more of a, a surface to grab onto and I can like mount my microphone and my light and various accessories if I need to. And I also got a screen protector on there for like a, a pack of them was seven bucks. But this camera overall is really great. It's small, it's compact. It has uh, great autofocus and low light capabilities. It shoots 4K. It has continuous recording, so you don't have to worry about it cutting at like 10 minutes. The battery life isn't the greatest. It's okay, but that's why I have these like five batteries. It also has a flip up screen like this. So when you do want to do like talking to yourself, you can, you could see yourself. I probably would prefer the screen to come out to the side because it flipping at the top, when I put like my light here or my microphone here, it covers up the screen quite a bit. You know, for the price and the capabilities of this camera, uh, it's kind of hard to beat, but you can't just have a camera, you gotta have some lenses. So I bought this Sony 18 to 105 F4 lens. This is a great all-arounder lens. This camera doesn't have image stabilization within it, but this lens has some image stabilization in it, so it kind of like evens out. It's super versatile. You get a great range. I had to have one lens on the camera, it would be this. And I think Sigma makes some good lenses too, if you don't want to go with Sony. But um, for what I got it for, I really like this lens. The sensor on this camera has a crop to it. And with being in a van in like a tight space, you really want something wider. And so I finally got a wide angle lens and this is the Sony 10 to 18. And it's another uh, F4, so it's not like a super fast lens. It's not the best in low light. But again, this camera does really good in low light situations. Having this, which I'll show you, you can get this camera like right up to your face. Just to give an example, with this distance, this is um, 18 which is probably closer to like 35, I don't really know. Uh, and then when you pop out, boom. I could probably, if you just want my face, there. Whoa, I look terrible in this light. It's a lot easier when you're doing this kind of thing where you're filming yourself uh, with this wide of a lens. 
So I'm swapping back to this camera now. Another nice thing to have is a variable ND filter. They're like sunglasses for your camera. The larger your f-stop is, everything's gonna be in focus. You're not gonna have like a blurry background or anything like that. The smaller the number, the shallower your depth of field will be. So if it's very sunny out, you can put your sunglasses on, your variable ND, and make it a lot less bright. And the larger the number is, the more you're gonna see the imperfections within your lens. So once you get past like F10 or more, you're gonna start seeing like dust within the lens or scratches that you may have. And so this helps control that. But again, you need to get it so that it fits the lens that you're using. So this is fit 72 millimeter for this lens. And if I wanted to do one on this wide angle, I'd need like a 62, I think. This is something you should invest in if you plan on filming outside quite a bit. I do have a small like Manfrotto mini tripod that the camera's on right now. And that's only like 20 bucks. And that's why I grabbed it, super simple. And then I also have this tripod, which packs down to like 19 inches, which is super tiny. It's great for travel. But then when you want to extend it, it'll go out to 77 inches. Pretty impressive for what it is. A Geekodo, uh, yeah, it's pretty light. It's only like three and a half pounds. Ugh. The other cool thing is that it's not just a tripod, it's also a monopod, so this leg will come off. I don't use monopods. I feel like people who shoot weddings use monopods. It's an option. Tripod. You need one. You need, you'll need a tripod. You got something in your ear, Rock. Bah. Oh, what's that? So another camera that I use is a GoPro. Uh, I think everybody has a GoPro or someone you know has a GoPro. And they're a good little tool to have, especially if you find yourself um, filming a bunch of sports or action sports because you can get them wet. They are small. They <laughs> do everything for you. You don't have to focus on anything. It's just like, you hit record and go. Uh, and the quality has gotten significantly better on these. The image stabilization within these newer ones are is pretty amazing. They're good to have if you wanna like stick it in the corner and do a time lapse, or if you want to get in a tight spot. They're not the best at low light. They do do okay. God. But again, this isn't like your go-to nighttime filming thing. And you're not gonna get like this sharp, crisp, real close-up shots on anything. This is more of a wide capture at all type of deal. And uh, the newer ones even have a front facing display. So if you wanna like, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so, welcome to my channel. You can do it with those. They do die quickly. You could get GoPro batteries for $20 a piece, or you could buy the knockoffs and you get three batteries with a three battery charger. $36 for three or $20 for one, $40 for two. And with GoPros, there's all these accessories. I prefer this one the most, uh, it's awesome. I think they made it for the Fusion first, but it's a tripod as well as this like extendable selfie stick. It's awesome. All right, this is like my go-to mount. Oh yeah, I forgot these ones too. This is a good one. You can clamp this anywhere. This is like a go-to one. Suction cup, man. This is for all those windshield shots when you're shooting yourself driving or doing time lapses of driving. This is a really good one to have. So I guess I can also talk about the first camera that I had. This little guy, it's a pretty decent camera. It shoots 4K. It has a flip up screen. So if you wanna shoot yourself, you can. And then the lens itself, it's a fixed lens. It's an F 1.8, so it does really good in low light. <laughs> And it's a zoom, and I don't remember what it zooms to, but I think it's like a 35 to a 100. I'll have to look that up, and maybe I'll like, bing, it's this. You can get these now off of eBay for like 250 bucks probably, maybe even cheaper. But my biggest gripe, you don't have interchangeable lenses, which is a bummer. You can't continuously record. It'll cut after five minutes. And then if, you if you're like recording five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, after 15 minutes, this thing's gonna overheat. And then you can't use it for another like 20 minutes. So it's not a good camera for like what I'm doing right now, just talking and yammering on about all these things I have. This is a good like point and shoot, grab the little moments when you want. Nice, 
little camera. But I think the best starter camera, if you really want, is just your phone. This is something everybody has. It's easy to pull it out. It does everything by itself, auto expose. You can like hold the screen and choose where you want to expose to. Same thing with the focus. And you can have like a wide angle already in these. There's like telephoto ones. There's uh, long exposures now. I did get this newer one. It's new-ish to me. And I had it for three days thinking like, cool, I got a, a brand new camera on here now. And my dad dropped it and cracked it. So you could see there that top lens. If you want to start, if you want to like, I want to be this YouTube, use, use your phone. While we're on cameras, I figured I might as well talk about this. So I recently got a drone for myself and it's tiny. I mean, phone, drone. And this is the DJI Mini 2, and it shoots 4K video. It is super compact and lightweight and user-friendly. I bought it as a kit, so I, it was like 600 bucks. Came with three batteries with this three battery charger, which is awesome. And they last like 30 minutes. It also came with some extra blades. And uh, it also came with this big old controller, which is funny because when you fold the drone down, it is actually smaller than the controller. I'm not a big drone guy personally, but I knew I had some things coming up that I'd want one for. And so I snagged it and I have used it when we went fishing. Uh, we went musky fishing a few weeks ago, which I'll have a video out with that soon. But I got to use this a little bit and chase the boat and see what it was like and how it kept up. And it did pretty good. Uh, I used to use this little guy, which is also small, but it's not as small because the wings don't fold down. This is the DJI Spark, which I think you can get on eBay used for like 250 bucks now. It shoots at 1080, which isn't like as huge, but when you're shooting stuff for YouTube, it doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, people watch like videos from their 4K TVs, but a lot of times people are just like ingesting this content through their phones or tablets and stuff like that, where 1080 is perfectly fine. If you want to get your feet wet with a drone, this worked fine for me. I have used other cameras throughout the various videos we have on the channel, them being like larger, more cinematic cameras. And I have found that it's more of a headache than it's worth. For the content that I'm making for YouTube, and I think a lot of the content that's on YouTube, if you're just a single person making it, you don't need a crazy large camera. You need something that's somewhat easy to use, that has good autofocus, good low light capabilities, that's at a decent price point, especially if you're starting out. If you're not sitting down and lighting a scene and putting time into it, having an amazing camera isn't gonna make it an amazing shot. It's just way easier and uh, makes a lot more sense to have something like a DSLR or mirrorless camera. We've used other cameras, some stupid expensive cameras, but at the end of the day, we didn't need to. Okay, now on to audio gear. So the main microphones that I use are in use right now. I've got one on the camera right here, and I also have my non-hidden lav right here. And so I guess I could pull this one off and talk about it a little bit. So this is a Tascam DR10L, little field recorder, I guess is what you would call it, with a lavalier mic that comes with it. This is like a super bare bones, simple lavalier pack. You plug your lav in, you put it on, you set your levels, and you hit record. The mic itself, this little lav mic, it's okay. Like what you're hearing is the quality you're gonna get out of it. Where you set it on yourself is gonna change the way it sounds. The more you have it turned away from you, the more muffled it's gonna sound. So having it in a good spot, and that's why I just, if I don't have like a button up shirt or something like that, I just set it right on my chest. Um, I don't care that you could see it. I really like this thing. I got it for 180 bucks off eBay. It runs off of a AAA and the battery lasts a really long time. I have a little SD card, micro SD card in there and uh, yeah, it's great. I'm gonna put this back on and then I'm gonna show you the other mic that I use like 80% of the time. So this little fur ball is the Rode video micro microphone. It's an awesome little attachment to have for your camera if you can record external audio. And I mount it, just a shoe mount, 
that goes on that cage that I bought for the camera and it makes my audio 10 times better if I'm in front of the camera. This is a directional microphone. So if you're behind the camera and you're talking, this doesn't do any good. So I plugged it back in and this is what it sounds like and I'm about a foot away from the camera. So if I take it, sorry for the sounds, and I face the opposite direction, it sounds completely different. So when you're talking behind camera and recording somebody, it's really muffled. Another microphone that I use quite often is for like voiceover stuff. It is a Rode NT USB microphone. It's got a little pop screen on it so that when you're it's not gonna like pop in this microphone. But you don't get a ton of control with these. You adjust the volume that goes into your headphones and the volume that goes from the mic into your computer. So you kind of need to be pretty close to these microphones too because the, if you're over here, it sounds different. If you're over here, it sounds different. If you're back here, it sounds a lot different. But if I do this and I take my coat, this is just for demonstration. You can kind of hear a big difference when you have a soundproofed, less echoey space in a world. So there you have it. So those are my main mics. Now I have other microphones that I use that I've had for a while that I use for different situations. So we'll move on to my old stuff. I have this old Zoom H4n, which is this like little field recorder. It's got this two XLR inputs and it also has this omnidirectional mic. I think that's what that's called. So what I typically use this for is just a recorder and then I will take an XLR cable and plug it in to a shotgun mic. This is my Rode NTG2 shotgun mic. This is very directional, a little windsock. This is good for, say, like sit down interview things. So all those moments where for the build series or whatever, my dad and I are sitting down and chatting, I will have lobs on us for the most part, but I'll also set this above our heads just in case like I miss something. So this is what the onboard mic sounds like from this thing. I wonder if I did this, if you'd hear any difference as I'm talking, as I'm rotating those mics. You could see this is very directional. So if I were to say talk like this, but then I did that, like that's just the smallest of movements and it's moving to the side. That's what this sounds like. Cool. Then there's some other mics that I use that I don't own. And one of those is Freddy's Rode Go wireless microphones. These are again, another like lav pack type deal. You set one to yourself, which this has a microphone in it, or it comes with a lav if you buy that one. It sounds a bit better, but you have to plug these into your camera. So it look, works very similar to that shotgun one that's on there now. This is what it sounds like if I were to clip it here or clip it here or clip it here. And then if you wanted, you can talk to it through this, which is the little lav mic that it comes with. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to synchronize it. You could just plug it in to your camera and then it records directly to what you're recording. Now the last piece of audio equipment that I'm gonna talk about is this Zoom F1 field recorder. You can buy it just with this, with a lav. You don't have any XLR inputs. I think you could buy an attachment. That's what this piece is for. If you didn't want to go with the lav, you can get this shotgun directional mic attachment, boom, and record with that and hook it up to a stand or something. It's also smart to invest in some rechargeable batteries. Uh, Amazon sells them for a decent price. This is what it sounds like with this directional microphone farther away, closer here. But I've used this. I've just set it on the ground and then aimed it at us or I've hung it up and aimed it at us when I didn't have my recorder on us. And then you can also use it as a lav mic. And this is a lav. Here's what it sound like, here what it sound like, here what it sound like, here what it sound like. The other thing you're gonna need if you want to record anything is probably a set of headphones. These are some Sony studio monitor headphones that are the MDR7506s. They pack down pretty tiny. There's tons of great options out there and then there's like noise canceling Bluetooth ones and stuff now. So you need some type of headphone to monitor your audio. So with all that stuff, you need something to record to. And I have a couple memory cards. This is a waterproof case. I think it's like eight bucks. There's these SD cards. I have two of these 64 gigabyte cards. 
I also have a 128 gig version of that. It's the 250 megabit per second one. And when you're shooting 4K video, you need something that is about that speed or faster. I do have this like old 32 gigabyte sand disk. I just use this for that zoom recorder. And then I have these little 32 gigabyte micro SD cards. And I use those in the GoPro and my little task cam recorder. And then I have the 128 gigabyte version and I use these in the GoPros as well as the uh, drone. Okay, so now onto my lights. I just have these little ones to help supplement like when it is dark. For instance, like right now, I just have a light up to get enough light in here because I ran out of daylight outside. One of the things I have is this little portable aperture light. It is the ALMX. Here's the controls. It's got this little diffusion that it comes with that's magnetized and you can hook it straight up to your camera with this little shoe mount with a pivoting head. It comes with the charge cable, this nice little case and some accessories that's on and you can choose your brightness. So that's like the lowest setting. That's a higher setting. You can even do it like set it to the lowest setting and then hit the boost and then it gets real bright but your battery is not gonna last nearly as long. If you wanna change your color temperature, that's kind of like the warmest setting, and then you can go to more of like a daylight, a cooler setting. And again, if you need more light, you just pop that diffusion off. Pretty decent for what it is. So now I'm gonna put this on the camera and then show you that. No light to having that little light on. So the other light that I have that I use for like sit down talking moments or interview moments is this Teletech pocket light cloth foldable bicolor LED mat kit. It's like 300 bucks. It comes with all sorts of goodies. So you get this like diffusion, they call it a half china ball, but the light itself is pretty small. It folds up just like that. This is my phone and this is the light. <laughs> you get two batteries, which are this, these like 750 lithium ion batteries with two chargers so you can charge them at the same time. And then the light panel itself gets some uh, multiple mounting pieces. I did separately buy this, it's called a newer stand. Uh, I think it was like 30 bucks and it was just a compact light stand. So I had something to put it on because that didn't come in the kit. It's dimmable, you can choose the color temperature. Color temperature, and then you can adjust it. And you can also dim it. <laughs> Easy peasy, compact, tiny. So this is a Quasar LED tube light. You can't like control how bright they are. You just like aim them away. You can adjust the temperature, warm, cold. But for traveling and stuff like that, this is a little harder to get places. This is a bayonet thing. I've used them before, but it's not like something I have in my kit. Mm. So on to computer things. I recently just got a new laptop and I went with this 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. It has a 2.3 gigahertz, eight core Intel Core i9 processor. Jargon, 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 jargon. And then um, I've been using one of Bayonet's adapters because it's all USB-C. Same thing, card reader. You need a way to ingest your footage. Uh, I did get a lo Logitech, Log Logitech mouse. This is the MX Master 3. So it has seven buttons that are configurable. So when you're editing like keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that and tools, you can apply to these buttons like the blade tool and whatnot. And I edit within the Adobe uh, creative cloud like suite and that's like 53 bucks a month I primarily use Premiere and Photoshop for all my editing and then I will jump into After Effects to do like some tracking or small motion things but for the most part it's Premiere if you're just getting into editing you can probably fart around with iMovie if you have a Mac it depends on what you're editing and what your experience is maybe like Final Cut is a better bet especially if you have a Mac just because it is an Apple product and it's only 300 bucks it's just like a one-time fee maybe one day I'll swap over to it but for now this is what I'm on I think 
the last thing I need to touch on are hard drives, like external storage. Once you shoot all this stuff, you have to put it somewhere and you can't just store it on your computer. Eventually it's gonna fill up and then you have nowhere to go. And if you're gonna be editing 4K footage, you need something fast. This is a Samsung portable SSD T7. And this is a two terabyte SSD little external hard drive. And this is what I work off of. And it has read speeds up to 1,050 megabytes per second, but it's 300 bucks. With two terabytes, it's a good like work drive. Now my backup is this behemoth RAID drive. Oh my gosh. It's a net store like housing enclosure with a bunch of uh, like five terabyte drives within here. And it's a RAID, so there's redundancy within it. So if one fails, one's being backed up. Because I'm partnering with Bayonet, they've given me this drive. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you need to get something like this big. You can get away with something a bit slower, and I'm pretty sure Western Digital has some solid state drives now that are like 200 or 300 bucks that are 12 terabytes, which is plenty if you're just starting out. Plenty of space, you'll be able to work off that for a while. I think that covers just about everything without getting too nitty gritty. Ugh, I hate this drive. So that's all my gear. Yeah, it's the next day. I ran out of time yesterday. I had other things to get done. But if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel or getting into this whole space, I don't think you need any of this really. It's not what you have in your hand. It's more about like what you have in your head and your ability to put it on screen. Exercise your creativity. Try to come up with ways to make videos out of what you have. Uh, you might be surprised at what you can come up with. And sometimes the best stuff comes out of not having much uh, at your disposal. So many people nowadays are just making videos and livings off of like Instagram and TikTok and things like that where it's short form material and um, they're shooting everything on their phones and they're just being creative. And that's where I think you could get away with just, you know, starting with a phone and then moving up to something like an action camera where it does everything for you. And then they, like GoPro offers a software that you can cut on and do simple edits with if you want to work with a timeline and put music underneath it. And I think if you start getting like little cameras like these action ones or that little Sony camera there, you should try to come up with uh, another way to record audio. Uh, externally because both of those cameras aren't focused on their audio quality and even if your image isn't the like most amazing thing out there if your audio is decent it will make all the difference I mean I'm not gonna lecture you on all of this stuff everyone makes videos everyone's got a social media account where they're sharing their lives so you're probably already doing it hopefully seeing what I use has helped a little bit maybe it's narrowed down your search and you can like pick a few of the things that i've listed here and give them a shot again i'm gonna have links to everything in the description if you got any questions leave them in the comments and thanks for watching all right now i gotta put all this stuff away i've created quite the mess done <laughs>